Yo, what up? We're back, and this week we're going to be doing the UFC Moscow card, which actually I kind of like this card betting-wise. I actually think I have a pretty good read on a lot of the fights on this card, so hopefully we do well, we can make some money, but we're going to jump right into it with the first fight, which is a rematch with Jessica Rose Clark taking on Panny Kianzad. And uh, Rose Clark, she's making a return to the Octagon. She's been out basically a year and a half, and she had two fights scheduled that she that she had to pull out of. I think due to injuries, so hopefully she'll have some better luck here in Moscow. One of them, actually, now I'm remembering, it was due to weight cut issues, and that is why she decided to move up to Bantamweight here. And she does look in excellent shape, you know, on social media. She looks pretty ripped. And like I said, she's going to get a chance to avenge a loss here in what is a rematch, where Penny Kianzan got a unanimous decision victory over uh, Jesse Jess in Invicta in 2015. But, um, you know, Clark, she's an okay striker. She does come forward with a high guard. Good job parrying. And, uh, you know, she has really nice kicks. The leg kicks, I think, are going to be an important thing for her on the feet here. Good straight right hand. And she will close the distance with punching combinations. Good step in knee. She will throw some body head kicks. Her boxing defense isn't good, though. She'll close the distance with her hands low. She can walk into punches a little bit. And she did get stunned by Jessica I very early in their fight. And when she fought Panny the first time, she was boxed up a little bit in that fight. She did get beat up on the feet. But Clark does have a great chin. She's never been finished with strikes. And she has two knockouts herself. But, you know, Jessie Jess, she is a very strong fighter. She's good in the clinch. Good body lock takedowns. Good knees to the body, to the head. And she likes to use the clinch to move directly into half guard or side control. Look for arm triangles. And she does a good job controlling position winning the round. But she doesn't do very much in top position in terms of uh, ground and pound or looking to finish the fight. Other than the tri uh, arm triangles really. And um, she will work off her back. She'll go for triangle chokes, things like that. But in her first fight with Kianza, she couldn't control her on the ground. And... Um, you know, Clark in the scrambles, she is pretty good. But, you know, Panny was able to out-scramble her there in their first fight. But in this fight, Clark should look to grapple, control on top her in the clinch, in my opinion. And she does have two career submissions, but I doubt she's going to get a submission here. But for Panny Kianzad, she's still in search of that elusive first UFC win. And she's 0-2 so far in the UFC. She did have a decent showing on Ultimate Fighter. She made it to the finale of the show. But she's, been hit a, she's hit a bit of a rough patch in her career. Um, she started off 8-0. and And she's just 5-5 and in her last 10 fights. But she's still young. She's 27 years old. She has a good opportunity here to defeat a name. In which she's already defeated in Jessica Rose Clark. And uh, Kianza, you know, she's a good boxer. Very good lead left, left hand. That's what she uses uh, very well in the first fight. Her jab, her left hook. And she can rely on those shots a little too much at times. But she also has a nice straight right hand. And at range, you know, she likes to kind of pot shot. She only throw one shot attacks, really. And uh, she likes to stick and move. Uh, she'll use the double jab to work her way inside. And she likes to back opponents to the fence. And that's where she'll throw left hook, straight right hand combination. She'll blitz forward with straight punch combos. And she's good at mixing it up, attacking the body. Her kicks... You know, she does have a decent head kick. She'll throw a jab head kick combo. And, um, you know, she'll also throw some occasional leg and body kicks. But her kicks aren't a big facet of her game, really. She likes to use some spinning back fists, some super, super woman punches, superman punches. And she doesn't control the center well. She can kind of get backed up towards the cage. And actually, I thought she had a better performance, though, in her last fight in terms of controlling the center. And, um, you know, she actually did decent against Julia Avila, but in the past, she will allow opponents to flurry on her, back her up, and, um, she does have power in her hands, I've seen her drop fighters, um, but, you know, she has been TKO'd one time, she was dropped a few times by Avila, and her defense can be, you know, a little bit, um, suspect in terms of, she can kind of just shell up at times when she backs up, she can... Um, leave her hands down a little bit in the pocket but she does have three knockouts herself and she's a competent grappler she will use combinations to crash into the clinch good uh, strong double underhooks nice knee short punches and she doesn't seem too physically strong I've seen fighters reverse her put her against the cage 
Uh, Macy Chiasan was kind of able to dominate her a little bit. But she does have good body locks, good trips. Her top game, it isn't super dangerous. And she has no submissions. And she, like I said, she could allow herself to get backed up too much, especially early in the fights. And she doesn't have the greatest takedown defense, but when she's put on her back, she is active from her guard. She has good arm bars, leg locks. She'll try to sweep. And if fighters get past the legs and move to side control, they can have some success in terms of landing ground and pound controlling her on the ground. And she does give her back to try to stand up. She was submitted via Rooney Kachoke against uh, Macy Chiasan. And she does scramble well, though, and she has good submission defense. And she seems to love scrambling being on the mat. I mean, these girls have fully locked in arm bars on her, and she's just smiling. She's definitely not part of that quick tap club. She was dominated um, on the mat against Julie Avila a little bit. And she needs to avoid being on her back in this matchup. I don't think she'll be in much danger of being finished when she's on her back. But I could see her being controlled if she does get taken down. And she does have two submissions. And she has been submitted two times. But she's a warrior, man. She loves to scrap. And she should be confident. She's beat Clark before. And I expect her to come in top shape. I mean, she knows this is a make-or-break fight being 0-2 in the UFC. And I actually think this is a close fight. I thought Panny looked better in her last match. She was able to do okay in the grappling versus a better grappler. She took down Avila. And, you know, a similar matchup to Clark in my opinion. But I think Avila is a better striker and a better grappler. But I think Kinsey Ed will be able to win the striking with her lead hand. I think Clark, if she uses forward pressure, cuts off the cage, controls, gets the cage on the ground, that's how she wins. But I'm going to say Panny's able to control the fight with her lead hand, control distance, kind of control the pace as well, maybe get some takedowns, win some scrambles. And I'm going to go with Kinsey Ed via split decision because of the line. And uh, she already beat Clark. I think the lines actually came down now to a pick em. Or maybe a slight lean on Jessica Rose Clark. But she, Penny Kinsey had opened up a pretty, I think she was like plus 150 or something. Which I think is kind of a crazy line. But, you know, I do think it's kind of properly lined now. But I'm going to go with Penny Kianzad via split decision in this fight. And I'm next year we have a good fight. We kind of have a prospect versus um, an up-and-comer fight. And, you know, Roosevelt Roberts, he's stepping into the octagon for the first time in his career following a loss. He had been undefeated, but he got beat by Vince Pichel, who's a very tough guy. And this is also the first time that Roberts is fighting out of the country. He's going to be facing a Russian in Russia, so it's going to be a new experience for him all around. But he's a good prospect, man. He has good, uh, nice leg kicks, good front kicks to the body, nice one-twos, good jab right hooks, good left hooks. And he can't allow himself to get backed up, but he has good head movement, hand speed, dangerous knees inside. And uh, he does keep his chin a bit high. Good fighters, you know, they could counter land clean punches. But Vince Michelle is a pretty good uh, come forward guy. Really struggled to hit Roosevelt Roberts clean. And he does a decent job parrying, using hand movement to roll with shots. And uh, slipping punches, coming back with counters. And he, he likes throwing hooks, uppercuts in the pocket. He can throw nice uh, elbows, good lead knees. But he can be a little bit flat-footed. And... Um, you know, his counter left hook, though, is dangerous inside. Solid power in his hands. Three TKOs. Most of those have come from ground and pound, but he does pack a punch on the feet as well. And um, he's never been knocked out before, and he has a very good chin for sure. And he's a great submission grappler. I mean, he can get backed up controlling the clinch, but he's dangerous there with front chokes. He had that nasty standing guillotine against Daryl Horcher. And um, he'll close the distance with double legs. He'll get slams. And he's very strong in the clinch. He'll get body lock takedowns. On top, he does do a good job passing. He'll move to dominant positions. Has good ground and pound. Good high mount. And he's very hard to buck off. Very good pressure while in the mount as well. Great job landing frame elbows. Eventually forcing opponents to give their backs. Where he'll get the rear naked choke. And he's dangerous, like I said, with standing chokes as well. He'll jump on guillotines, front chokes. His defensive grappling was the main reason why he lost his last fight against Vince. Vince was able to back him up, hit double legs on him, control him against the cage. And you have to think he's addressing that part of his game. And he's facing a similar, uh, or maybe not a similar guy, because I don't think Yakolev has the same type of toughness and strength as Vince, but someone who's going to have a similar game plan, I think. And uh, so he should have been working that and uh, look, look to defend that here. But he does have four submissions, three guillotines and a rear naked choke, and he's never been submitted before or finished in his career. 
But for Alexander Yakolev, he did return from a two and a half year layoff, earned that stoppage victory in April, and uh, he's a very experienced man. He's fought high um, high level competition. He's been fighting since 2004, and he has fought the majority of his career at 170. But he's a huge lightweight. He made the weight well last time it seemed like, and he stands six feet three. He's a rangy southpaw technical guy he likes to use his range land nice jab straight punches throw nice one twos jab left hooks and he will follow the straight left with the right uppercut or right hook nice inside leg kicks body head kicks and um, he uses a lot of movement he doesn't really want to exchange much he definitely allows opponents to control the center and um, in my eyes he kind of gives the gives rounds away by doing that he'll constantly get backed up and he does tend to sometimes extend his arms to defend punches, circles away with his hands low, and this does leave him susceptible to being hit. He also gets stand heavy on his lead leg when he sits down on punches. He does have 9 knockouts and he's only been finished one time via strikes, so solid chin and he's a guy who, you know, doesn't take a ton of risks. But Yakolev, he's a strong grappler, he's solid in the clinch, good knees, control, very nice timing on single doubles good at elevating opponents moving directly into side control he will catch kicks take opponents down off the kicks strong mount uh you know and he will chase opponents uh backs as well he doesn't really have the greatest top control though fighters do seem to be able to stand up from under him and he can be taken down himself but you know he's decent off his back and against the cage he has much better takedown defense than in space he'll stuff the head sprawl heavy look for front chokes and he had a scramble fest fight with Alex Da Silva. And, um, you know, he was controlled against the fence, taken down. But he showed good ability to get up from bottom. Ultimately, he locked in that guillotine and got the finish. And he was able to survive three rounds with Damian Maya. So, I mean, this guy, you know, he's shown the ability to, um, you know, not get submitted recently. But he has been submitted four times in his career. All four, all four of his losses have also been via uh, any variation of arm locks, straight arm locks, arm bars. And he has eight career submissions, though, so he is a finisher, man. And um, he has solid cardio. He definitely has kind of a style to win decisions, but also has got a lot of finishes on his record. But I, I like this fight for Roosevelt Roberts, and I think the UFC is trying to set him up with a win here. You know, Roberts is clearly the better striker. He's more dangerous. He throws more volume. And I think the length of Roberts will be something Yakolev is really not used to seeing at 155. And he won't have that same advantage of fighting on the outside. Roberts is a very long guy himself, and he actually only has a one-inch reach disadvantage in this fight. And, um, you know, I see Roberts cutting off the cage, landing more shots against the cage, being able to get takedowns when he wants to. I don't think Yakolev will be able to take him down and hold him down like Bichel did. And Bichel took a lot of damage to get those takedowns. I don't think Yakolev is as tough as Vince. I also feel Roberts is a fighter who took that loss to Hartman. He's young. He's going to be improving. He's hungrier, he's in his prime, and, uh, you know, Yakolev is aging. And I'm going to say Roberts goes in there, gets a second round submission here, and, um, you know, has a very good performance and uh, kind of gets a dominant victory here over the veteran Alexander Yakolev. And I expect him to bounce back, get a big win here. So Roosevelt Roberts, second round submission. In an interesting fight here, up next we have the debut of a third Namagamedov in the octagon, you know, Khabib's cousin Abu, Abu Bakar. And, um, you know, he's already experienced. He's 15-2. and two. He's competed in WSOF, PFL, so some decent promotions. And he's well-rounded. He's definitely fluid as a striker, offensively at least. Good in-and-out movement. He has good feints, head movement. He controls the cage well. And he's a southpaw, so he likes to work behind his jabs, his left kicks, that straight left hand down the pipe. And uh, he throws a lot of inside, outside low kicks early and often. Really nice one twos, and his straight left hand is definitely accurate, both to the body and the head. Really good overhand left, left uppercut as well. And in the pocket, he will faint takedowns, throw some powerful hooks, uppers. He could slip, slip and rip effectively at times as well. And he will attack the body, good check right hook. Really nice uh, left round kick, both to the body and the head. Really good timing on step in knees as well. But he does not like getting pressured on the feet. He'll kind of turn into pure wrestling mode, shoot in desperately on the legs. And um, he tends to not move his head when he throws punches. In his loss in the PFL, he was countered with a big uppercut while he throw in a jab. And he got dropped and submitted. And he struggles on the inside. He's susceptible to low kicks, getting caught with counters in the pocket. He likes to be on the outside or in on the legs or body lock. 
And he has been finished one time via doctor stoppage. I've also seen him dropped. But usually when he's hurt, he can kind of rely on his wrestling to bail him out. But he does have six KO TKOs in his career himself. I wouldn't say he's a big knockout threat, though, in terms of on the feet. He kind of, you know, I wouldn't say he has big power for sure. But he, you know, as you probably would have guessed, is a phenomenal wrestler. Excellent at punching his way into takedowns. He'll land a punch immediately, duck under into the double leg, get his hands connected, dump, or come up into a body lock. And he sets up his takedowns well in space, but he's more effective when he could take fighters down near the fence. He'll jam opponents against the cage, make some hard to scramble and throw up submissions. He'll turk the legs, you know, look to slide in a mount, move into half guard, trap the far wrist with the seatbelt, you know, chip away with ground and pound. And, uh, you know, he forces opponents to give their backs... And fighters have been able to give their backs and stand up with the help of the cage. But he's kind of good at staying connected, mat returning opponents. He can get stagnant in top position though, stuck in opponent's guards, um, isn't super active. He can get put in triangles, guillotines, and his submission defense, you know, looks a little bit suspect. And it can make him very conservative when opponents have active guards. I really don't think he has a ton of faith in his jiu-jitsu. I've seen him swept with Kimuras, and I've seen him almost submitted. And he isn't much of a submission threat. I mean, he has four career submissions, but three of the fighters he submitted had losing records. And he hasn't earned a submission since 2014. In space, Abu Bakar is hard to take down. He has fast hips, great sprawl. But Bojan Velichkovic was able to use his striking to back him up. Took him down near the cage multiple times with double legs. And he also had success controlling Ner Nurmagomedov against the cage a bit also. Uh, you know, Abu Bakar was able to reverse position very quickly when he got taken down. And he is excellent at creating scrambles off his back, retaking top position. And uh, gets Bojan, you know, he wasn't really able to control Bojan on the ground though. So it kind of became a 50-50 fight where they both were taking each other down, couldn't control. And I would say Abu Bakar was getting the advantage in the grappling scenarios, but he was losing the striking. The fight was ruled a draw, and in his most recent loss, he did get dropped and submitted by Rudy Kachoke, but that was more due to him being hurt more than not having submission defense. But he definitely isn't good as Khabib or even at Islam. He just doesn't possess that same type of control, ground and pow, did uh, jiu jitsu, but he does have great cardio, the will to win, and I'm sure he's going to be hungry here to impress in Russia at his debut. And I would say, you know, he's kind of more similar to Islam in terms of the fluidity with the striking, maybe even a little more fluid, even though he has those defensive issues. But just in terms of the control of the bat, he just isn't on the level of, you know, Islam or Khabib or someone like that. But for Zawada, you know, he's likely getting his last opportunity for a win here inside the Octagon. He's 0-2 in his previous UFC fights. Definitely leads a victory here to keep his job. And he's not getting an easy matchup, man. He's facing, you know, Nurmagomedov in Russia. I mean, these guys don't don't really like Zawada, man. I mean, fuck. They give him, uh, fucking, uh, the leech in China. Now they're giving him Abu Bakar in Russia. But shit, I mean... Zawada, you know, he's explosive, he's athletic, he can handle himself, and he likes to stock opponents, controls the setter well, closes the distance with the left hook straight right hand, he also blitz forward with two or three straight right hands, and he's good at fading to create pull counters, which I think in this fight could potentially, like, you know, give him some successful moments. In the pocket, he will let go with multi-punch combinations, good head movements, slipping punches, and, and uh, very willing to exchange in the pocket. That's where he needs to be, man. And he rarely ever takes a step backwards in his fights. I mean, he's a good presence in there, good step in knees, nice body kicks. And he wears on opponents. I mean, you could see that in his fight with Danny Roberts, which was a grueling match for both guys. And Zawada was able to drop Lee Jingliang as well. And uh, he has 11 knockouts. He is a finisher. He's only been finished one time via KO in his career. And he has a strong chin. You know, he was finished with a... Uh, sidekick to the body in his last match but David Zawadi is a dangerous submission grappler he isn't a super active seeker of the takedown but I feel late round takedowns could help seal this fight and uh he will use blitz attacks to get it on seagulls doubles against a cage he likes to use trips sacrifice throws and I would definitely stay away from those throws in this match and I'm not sure he's gonna be able to control Abu Bakar but he can you know wear on him give him something to think about and Abu Bakar also gives his back to stand up. Boyad was almost able to take his back in the third round. And Zawada, you know, he's good at taking the back. 
And uh, Zawada's going to be taken down. I mean, the fight's going to be won if he's able to submit or get back to his feet. And he is a dangerous guard. He will attack with triangles. He did almost catch Danny Roberts in an R bar. He will roll for leg locks. But, you know, Nurmagomedov has also struggled with fighters with active guards, triangles specifically. And if Zawada can get Abubakar thinking about the submission, I do think he'll be able to mute a lot of his offense from top position. And I've seen fights, you know, such as Abubakar's fight with Jonathan Weston, where he became very defensive, even in top position. He was just kind of hanging out in the guard, controlling. And uh, Weston was very active off his back with submissions, crowd and pound. And he arguably won the fight off bottom. And I think Zawada, you know, he has to show some urgency, though. Even if he feels he's being effective off his back, I think the judges are going to favor the control. They're going to favor Abu Bakar. And Zawada has a pretty good butterfly guard. And if the subs aren't working, you know, he needs to work back to his feet. He can't be content just tacking submissions off bottom. And he does have pretty good sweeps. I definitely think he can hold his own in the grappling. But he showed some poor fight IQ in the grappling realm. He'll attack with front chokes that put him on his back. He also gets very tired in grappling heavy fights. You know, Danny Roberts fight specifically. He did take his first two UFC fights on short notice. And this is the first time he's getting a full camp. And so, I mean, maybe he'll come in in better shape here. He does have three submissions. He has been submitted only one time. But uh, I do think this fight is dog or pass. But I'm going to go with Abu, Abu Bakar. Um, I think Zawada will give up takedowns. Just be too complacent off his back. And I think Abu Bakar will do enough with the top position to win the fight. So I'm going with Abu Bakar via decision here. And uh, up next year we have a fight that I'm not really too interested in. But Grigory Popov taking on Davy Grant. And Popov, you know, he was in a back and forth fight in his UFC debut against a very good fighter in Eddie Wineland. And he held his own, but he ultimately got finished by knockout. And uh, he is going to return in Russia in his home country, but he's 35 years old. This is likely his last chance at a UFC win, but he is a Tiger Muay Thai striker. Kind of tends to start slow, but, you know, he's fun to watch when he opens up. Really nasty jab, heavy low kicks, good jab, right, uh, right leg kick combination. Very nice left hook and, you know, very good speed, accuracy on his punches. And uh, he, he's economical. He doesn't really open up stupidly. He'll attack the body with jabs, one-twos, heavy hooks, good round and front kicks. And he doesn't really wind up on his kicks. They all come very fast. Um, good spinning heel kicks as well. He'll throw spinning back fists. But he is kind of low volume at times. And he's ve very hittable inside. You know, I've seen him with his hands low. And in this fight with Eddie Wineland, man, he was getting pieced up with that straight right hand. He ultimately got dropped, knocked out. He had some small success in that fight, but, you know, I would say it's kind of was a bad performance. He didn't really do much. He took a lot of damage. And, um, you know, he does have good cardio. He comes in great shape. He has good power for knockouts. And uh, he's very good in the clinch, really nice knees, uh, good elbows, and good body locks, hip tosses, and uh, really nice Renekin choke. He has two go-go platas, but he can be taken down himself. And, um, you know, he has decent get-ups, but those are against low-level guys. In this fight with Grant, though, I do think he Grant will be looking to mix it up. So, Popov has to be ready to defend takedowns, especially early, in my opinion. And, um, you know, he does have three submissions, and he has been submitted one time. But for Davy Grant, he is returning. He's been out for a year and a half. He's been very inactive. You know, he's only fought twice since 2016. And he hasn't won a fight in almost four years. One in four in the UFC. And he's coming up being finished in less than a minute over Manny Bermudez. And, um, you know, a loss here would probably lead to him being cut. But he's a forward pressure guy. He likes to come forward, wide stance, long punches. Pretty good one, too. And uh, decent, you know, uh, overhands, hooks inside. He will sit down, throw with power. He'll attack the body. Likes to throw knees. And, um, you know, he will close the distance with uppercuts, rounded front kicks. He also throw front leg side kicks. But... He holds his hands low. He could definitely be reckless in the way he closes distance. There was a lot of naked kicks that get him countered. And he got dropped with a hard straight right hand against Manny Bermudez by doing that. And, um, you know, he's more of a volume guy. He only has one TKO. And um, he is very tough, man. I mean, you have to put him out to stop him. He's never been finished by strikes. And he's a decent wrestler. I mean, he will use his forward pressure to back opponents up, shoot in on singles, doubles. And he's strong in the clinch. He has good offense with knees, dirty boxing. And, um, 
You know, in top position, he's okay. He has good rear naked chokes. He's very aggressive. But he can be swept. And he's had a submission defense issue over his career. And he's been put in arm bars. And, uh, you know, he can be taken down himself. And, you know, he just isn't that impressive, really, to me. He's been submitted in all four of his losses. But he isn't a part of that quick tap club. I mean, he'll look to get out of submissions, deep arm bars. He was put to sleep against Manny Bermudez in his last fight with the triangle. But he usually comes with good cardio. He Being able to push is usually a strength for him. And to me, you know, this is a, kind of a toss-up. But I'm going to go with Popoff. I mean, I think he's a better striker. I think he may land a straight shot that hurts Grant. I think Grant will want to try to back Popoff up, mix it up with takedowns. And, um, you know, I'm going to say Popoff via first-round KO. But not high confidence in this fight. And I think the line is a little bit crazy to have Popoff as that big of a favorite. But... I also wouldn't be running to the window to bet on um, Davy Grant. So the pick's going to be Grigori Popov via first shot knockout here. Now next year we actually have a fight that I'm looking forward to because this could be a banger. You know, this is Carl Roberson taking on the newcomer Roman Kopilov. And, uh, you know, Roberson, he's, he got back on track by the skin of his teeth in his last fight. He had that split decision win over Wellington Terman. And uh, he did avoid that two-fight losing streak. But this will be the first time... Uh, Robertson's fighting in Russia. He has fought in Brazil one time, but he is very athletic. He's a good prospect. He's fast, good straight left hand, nasty counter right hook. And his straight left hand keeps opponents at bay pretty well. He's able to pot shot, and he has strong leg kicks, body kicks. He will brawl at times, and he does have an issue leaning back and really relying heavily on his speed. But he will throw nice uppercuts. He can be a little bit wild. Uh, you know, closing the distance, especially on short in short range as well. And he could also back up a kind of a bit awkward when he's defending blitzes. He kind of, you know, instead of angling off, he just stands right in front of opponents and you'll back up at straight lines. He does have a similar striking style to Roman, but I think Roman is a little faster, more polished, but definitely think Roberson has the power. He doesn't throw many combinations, Roberson, and I kind of think he should look to improve that because I think if he can land a second shot after the left hand, he could get more knockouts. He does have two career KO TKOs, and, um, you know, he does have some well-timed double legs, good slams, and on top, he has good ground and pound elbows. He'll move to mount, and he's proven to be dangerous in the clinch as well. I mean, wicked Ds, good uh, uh, elbows to the head when opponents are going for takedown attempts. And, uh, you know, he has finished fighters with that before. And he has submitted guys like Darren Stewart. So he's submitted some decent guys. And, um, you know, he's been on his back three times in the UFC. And twice he's been finished via arm triangle, though. And uh, against Wellington Terman, he showed some poor IQ. You know, he grappled with Terman. He put himself in bad positions. And he made the fight much closer than it needed to be. And in this fight, you know, I don't expect him to have to worry about many takedowns. And, um, you know, maybe he will go for some takedowns, but I think he's going to get into the brawl in this fight. But for Roman, he's going to be making his UFC debut. He's undefeated, former Fight Nights global champion, and he is 8-0 with 7 finishes. He was scheduled to make his debut in April versus Christoph Jocko, but had to pull out due to an injury. And this will be his first fight of 2019. And he looks like a beast striker, man. I mean, he's a southpaw, light on his feet, lightning fast. I mean, really fast, really nice jab, straight punches. His straight left hand is a sniper, man, to the body and the head. He's constantly faking and feigning. And a really nice check right hook. Fast hands inside. Good flurries with hooks and uppercuts. He doesn't really stick around in the pocket. He'll land his flurries, circle out. His head movement is very good. And um, he will catch fighters entering with lead elbows, good front knees. And when opponents try to level change or get inside, most of the time, you know, um, he's a guy that's landing the counters. And he's the fighter usually pressuring forward behind the feints, his jab, trying to draw draw out opponent's shots so he can pull counter. And his distance control with the straight left hand is just awesome. He stays defensively sound. He slides just out of the way of strikes. And he doesn't really get hit much in his fights. You know, opponents have had some success with leg kicks, but he has uh, really nice kicks of his own, really nasty left round kicks to the body, good spinning kicks. He doesn't throw in combination very much. He doesn't really put himself at much risk. He is undefeated, and he does have power, but it's kind of more about time to throw him, and he doesn't really load up. He doesn't throw wide shots. When he knocks one, it's out. It's because he's landing an accurate shot, and he's also very good with body shots. He hurts a lot of opponents with body shots, and he does have seven consecutive fights um, 
uh, that he's won by KOTKO after he won his decision, um, or his <laughs> won via de- decision in his debut. Roman, he's also definitely a striker. He doesn't really look to grapple much. He is a five times hand to hand combat world champion, so I do imagine he has wrestling skills, but doesn't really wrestle offensively. Defensively, he is very hard to take down. He's fought some good Russian wrestlers, and his takedown defense is held up. He's also, you know, very good with the distance control. It's hard to shoot good takedowns in him, especially at range, and he's good at limp legging out of single legs. Great balance. And against a cage, he'll use over unders, wrist control. I've seen him fight off of his back or in top position just a very little bit. You know, when he fought a protege of Khabib's father, he was taken down, but he used the cage to stand back up quickly. And I've seen Roman catch him kicks, dump opponents, but he didn't follow him to the ground. I haven't really seen much of him from top position. I really don't expect him to wrestle here. I think it should be a striking fight. And Roman, he has no submissions. He has been fighting in five rounds. His cardio holds up. So I do think he's going to be able to sprint here more in this fight. And this is a great fight, man, because these guys could strike. Roberson, he's going to need to get inside, flurry body head, walk Roman down. Because Roman definitely is better on the outside, in my opinion, with the distance control. And Roberson has to brawl with Roman, throw the leg kicks, go body head, you know, brawl the technician. And Roman is going to be the one on the outside, jabbing, pull countering, setting up front knees, body shots. And I think if this fight stays on the outside, a technical fight, Roman will win running away. And I'm going to go with Roman here in Russia because Roberson, he isn't, you know, that one-punch power guy. And I think he's going to be content to be on the outside for too long. I've seen fights where he's facing guys like Dustin Jacoby. And Jacoby was able to keep him at the end of his shots, really beat him up. And uh, Roberson didn't really have an answer to get inside. And I think that Roman kind of implemented a similar game plan. And, um... I don't think Robertson will get finished. I think he's going to have some moments. But I'm going to go with Kopolev via decision here. And I'm fairly confident that um, he will get it done. So I'm going to go with Roman Kopolev via decision. And up next year we have another you know, uh, prospect fight versus veteran. And it's uh, Rustam Kabalov taking on Sergei Kondosko. And you know Kabalov he's returning for his second appearance in Russia. And um, he will be taking on a fellow Russian opponent here. He's looking to get back on the horse. You know, he had a six-fight win streak snapped by uh, Diego Ferreira. He took a lot of punishment in that fight. But, you know, we just saw what Diego Ferreira did to, um, what's his face, to Maribek Tysimov. So, that isn't as bad a loss because he cooked Tysimov, too. And Tysimov is serious. So, but, um, Kapilov may be getting a little bit older, but he's still explosive. He's athletic. Good jab. Good straight left hand. He is a southpaw. He'll throw the left hook, or, yeah, you throw the left hook, or, he's not a southpaw, I'm sorry, but he'll throw a nice straight right hand, you'll throw a good left hook, nice straight right hand, great overhand right as well, and, um, he will throw a left hook, straight right hand combination, you'll attack the body, he likes to throw a left hook to the body to a left hook to the head, and you'll throw a lot of, uh, you know, counters moving backwards, good job landing long hooks when he has opponents gets a cage as well, rear uppercuts, good leg kicks, good front kicks, he has um, some decent spinning kicks as well. He did drop George Mazadal with the spinning back kick to the head. Four knockouts in his career. And you know his grappling is where he's going to win this fight in my opinion. Strong in the clinch. Good control. He did cut Cajun uh, Johnson in the clinch with a big elbow. He would throw spinning back elbows off the break. Very good single and double legs. Great timing on the doubles. He'll shoot doubles into the body lock. Land nasty suplexes. And on top, he has good control. He'll throw enough ground upon to keep top position, but isn't overly dangerous. And he likes to kind of uh, get his opponents near the cage where it's harder for him to scramble, control. And he does have four submissions. He's only been submitted one time, but he doesn't have a lot of ground upon. He's more of a guy that wins decisions. But for Kandasco, he's going to be looking to move to 2-0 and in the UFC. And he's going to be making the drop to lightweight for the first time since 2012. And at six foot one, he is a huge lightweight. He's going to tower over uh, Kabalov, who's 5'8". And he's a solid striker. He's an explosive athlete. He's good in and out, good distance control. And he's pretty fast, good movement. And he likes to work behind the jab. He has a nice one, too. Really nice left hook to the body and the head as well. He'll throw a jab, left hook. And he likes to walk opponents into jabs, left hook, straight right hands. Very nice front and round kicks to the body. He'll also throw nice switch kicks to the body. Throw spinning back kicks as well. 
And, um, you know, he gets up the center pretty easily. And he allows opponents to back him towards the cage. He will allow opponents to flurry on him in close range. And I don't like his defense at close range at all. I feel like he's hittable there. And he does have 12 career knockouts, though. And he's ne he's only been knocked out one time. But he's a solid grappler as well. In the clinch, he has good judo, nice hip throws. He'll uh, move from side control to the mount pretty well. And he has a nice ground and pound there. He doesn't really have the best top control, though. Opponents are able to explode back to their feet. And his takedown defense is a little bit suspect. He will use the wizard. He uses his height to get trips, reversals pretty well. But persistent wrestlers can take him down as well as people that can time takedowns well. And um, he sometimes will throw naked kicks that get him taken down. And when he's taken down... He will try to explode quickly to get back to his feet, but he gives his back to stand up. I've seen opponents control him from the back mount, submit him with the rear naked choke, and uh, just control him in top position as well. If you get cement position on this guy, he doesn't have the greatest get-ups. He does have seven submissions, but a lot of those are early in his career. And in this fight, he's definitely going to be looking to keep this fight standing. He has been submitted two times, and I would say he has questionable cardio. He was very tired in the third round of his UFC fight. And I see this fight as UFC trying to get Kabbalah a win here. Kandasko has struggled with wrestlers. I don't think he's has that footwork to circle and avoid being backed up to the cage. And, um, you know, on the feet, I think he should have an advantage. But I think it's wide enough uh, for him to keep Kabbalah off of him. I think that Rustam could have success in the pocket with punches also after getting the takedowns. And I think that if Sergey uh, gets taken down, he may not be able to control early. But eventually, I see, you know, Rustam controlling him, getting top control, pulling away. And Rustam has a bunch more experience, gets high-level guys, squeaking out close fights. I think Kandasko moving down in weight could get him tired as well. And Kapilov, he isn't much of a submission threat, but I think he takes a clear 30-27, maybe 29-28 decision here, and uh, gets the victory. So I'm going to Rustam Kapilov via decision. And up next, we have a pretty good fight on paper with Magomed Ankalaev taking on Dalcha Lungi and Bula. And uh, for Ankalaev, he rebounded from that debut loss in the UFC, back to back victories now. And he's going to be fighting in Russia. He's a pretty sizable favorite here. And he's very athletic for a light heavyweight. He's a southpaw. He's explosive. Really nice long jab. He'll jab to the body. He has hard low kicks. Very nice straight left hand. Good left hooks. He likes to throw round kicks to the body to a straight left or right hook combination. He has a really nice jab overhand right combo. He has strong counter straight right hands, good counter left hooks. And he likes to mix in these shovel hooks, short uppercuts in the pocket. And, um, you know, he has really nice rear leg head kick. It's very fast. You'll follow with the straight right hand down the middle and uh, or straight left hand, I'm sorry. And he's a power kicker, man. I mean, whether it's your legs, body, or head, even if you put your guard up, he's trying to kick through your, through your arms, break your arms. He landed a nasty counter left hook to a head kick combination that finished uh, Marchi and Prokniel. He is kind of flat footed at times when he walks opponents down. And he can kind of just stand right in front of him and wait to counter. But he gets away with it because of his speed and his athleticism. And he, when he lets his shots go, man, I mean, his um, hand speed wise and kick speed wise, he's one of the fastest light heavyweights in the division in my opinion. He has power. He has five knockouts and ten wins. Good durability. He's never been finished by strikes. And uh, he's a strong grappler, a great wrestler, very strong in a clinch. He'll do damage in that position, hard elbows, big knees, really good off the brakes. He'll load punching combinations. He'll come off the brakes with head kicks, good knees. Strong double legs, though. He'll lift and dump opponents. Good top control, brutal ground and pound. I mean, he's put people to sleep with ground and pound. He'll move to dominant positions like the mount. And um, he was finished via triangle by Paul Craig with one second left. And he kind of tapped within less than five seconds or ten seconds of the submission being locked in. So kind of a quick tapper there. He seemed to panic. But he does have good takedown defense. He'll get double underhooks. He'll snap opponents down. Um, he was taken down a couple times by Paul Craig with good time double legs. But he was able to sweep, get back to top position. He's zero submissions in his career, so he hasn't shown to be a submission threat. But he has good cardio, he's composed, and um, he should have the technical advantage everywhere here. But, you know, Dodger Champion's a scary guy. He had a successful UFC debut knocking out da Daquan Townsend. And he's won six consecutive fights. He's a physical specimen, man. I mean, he's a big, scary, scary guy with one-punch knockout power. Very explosive. He's just a powerhouse. 
And um, he's more of a counter puncher, but his blitz attacks are dangerous, man. Solid jab to the body and the head. He'll throw a jab, left hook, jab, uppercut. Really devastating overhand right. He's very fast. He closes the distance in the blink of an eye. Super explosive. He looks kind of circle, wait for his opponents to throw, time time shots, and just come over the top with blitzes or he'll counter. Kind of a similar style to like Derek Lewis, but nasty counter left hook, right uppercut. He'll throw a right uppercut left hook combo. He doesn't really throw a lot of straight shots. Very wide with everything, which makes him vulnerable in the pocket. But, you know, fighters could tag him and he has a hell of a chin, man, and he's just dangerous. I mean, if you uh, if he lands one shot, he plants his feet and knocks you out, um, you know, he can hit you with one punch and take you out for sure. He has four knockouts. He's never been finished by strikes. And he's a decent wrestler. His defensive wrestling and his game off his back do look a bit questionable. But his offensive wrestling is solid. I mean, he's good big slam takedowns. He's very physical. Good double legs. Good at catching kicks. Nice clinch throws, trips also. And his wrestling isn't elite. But, you know, he was able to dominate Daquan Townsend with some grappling. He does have heavy hips. He's good at reversing takedowns, getting top position. And um, he isn't super dangerous on top, though. He will throw some small ground and pound from the guard. And if he can get to a dominant position, he will open up. But he's not a big passer. I mean, he prefers to just kind of stay in the guard, control opponents from there. And fighters are able to stand up from under him. And also, he doesn't really, you know, have any submission game to speak of. In his last match, he was able to control on top for large periods of the fight. And um, he was controlling from inside his opponent's guard. He did land some nice elbows, punches. But, um, you know, he can be taking out with body locks himself. And off his back, he just doesn't look very good. He doesn't have good get-ups. And in his one career loss, he was submitted via rear naked choke. He does have two submissions, but in my opinion, Magomed should win this fight. But fighting a guy like Doucher is always scary. Um, Douch is super durable. He has an undying spirit. and He's going to be dangerous until the end. Always has that one-shot power. Um, you know, in this fight, though, I think Magomed is more technical everywhere. He has better striking. He's much more fluid. Throws more volume, more diversity. And, um, you know, Douch just waits and waits and explodes and is dangerous. But if he doesn't finish the fight or at big moments, he's going to lose. And he can also be taken down. And I think that's the least path of resistance for Mago. I think Mago is going to be... You know, looking to get the takedowns, dominate in top position, maybe even look for the finish. I think on the feet, his kicks will cause Dalcha issues. And I think he's going to be able to outstrike Dalcha also, but play it smart. Mix in the takedowns, use the top position to wear on Dalcha a little bit. And my pick's going to be Magomed via third round TKO, via ground and pound, or for him to take a decision victory here. But I'm going to go with Magomed and Kalaev to get it done. Oh man, I actually love this fight right here with Rocco Martin taking on Ramazan Amiev. And Amiev, you know, he's had a tough 2019. He's had two fights booked. They were both canceled. And this is going to be his first fight of the year. He suffered an injury. Then he had some visa issues. But he's 3-0 overall in the UFC. And he's getting a sizable step up of competition here in Rocco Martin. Who did suffer his first loss at 170. But that loss was to Damian Maia, man. And, uh, you know, he's still 4-1 at welterweight. Defeating Amiv would be a massive win for him. And this is an excellent fight, man. I mean, both these fighters are on the fringe of the top 15. They probably could beat fighters inside the top 15. And Rocco Martin, you know, he was able to dominate round 3 versus Damian Mai. He arguably pulled out that draw if you gave him a 10-8 round. And uh, for Ramazan Amiv, he's won 7 consecutive fights. He's yet to lose a round in the UFC yet. And on the feet, both guys are solid. But I definitely think Rocco Martin has the advantage there. Amiv is a fighter who likes to fight at a more deliberate pace. Use that forward pressure, especially early. Maul opponents gets a cage. And he does have clean hands, though. He's constantly faking, feigning. Good in and out movement. Very nice jab. Heavy one, two. Really nice overhand right. He throws a lot of just one or two shot combinations. He kind of just likes to pot shot opponents until he can get in on the body lock. He will throw some nice kicks. Body head, some spinning kicks. And he's very cool, calm, composed. Excellent at using his striking to back opponents up, landing a straight or right hook, then moving directly into the double underhook position. Very physical in the clinch, and that's where I see him having the most success here. I think he's going to be the stronger fighter. He may be able to slow down the fight, 
by controlling against a cage, maybe sealing the rounds with late takedowns. And he's also excellent at landing shots off the break, which Rocco has to be careful with. He'll land nasty hooks, straight punches. And on, on the feet, though, I think Martin needs to pressure Ameev. Ameev isn't a one-punch power guy. He's low volume as well. And when fighters walk him down, he can pull back with his chin up. He seems susceptible to low kicks. And he can be a bit uncomfortable when opponents use intelligent forward pressure. They're in and out. And I feel like Rocco can bring that on the feet. He has to go forward and make Ameev fight off the back foot. And Ameev is probably going to look to get it to the mat, but I'm not confident he can control Rocco on the mat. Ameev was unsuccessful in controlling upper to Mina on the ground. And I feel like Rocco's going to threaten with his jiu-jitsu enough to stand up. I don't think it's likely he'll submit Ameev, but um, it's possible. And I do think Ameev can be taken down himself, and Rocco should maybe even look to put him on his back. You know, Sekulak was able to take down Ameev in Ameev's last fight. Ameev did show very good ability to counter with Kimura as a really good butterfly guard. And uh, Sekulak isn't at the level of Toady on the mat, though. And I think Martin is one of the more underrated submission games of the UFC. He's a dangerous opponent to grapple with. He was out grappled by Damian Maya, but I mean, he survived for two rounds with Maya on his back. He didn't really, was a huge danger. And he did a lot better than by, uh, versus Maya than a lot of guys. And in this fight, I think Rock has to show diversity in his striking. He needs to pressure at times, but he also needs to fight moving backwards as well. Use low kick straight punches, keep a move on the outside, uh, be in and out. And he may be able to land a head kick as well, I, I imagine, if as a move pulls back. I think the distance control, the ability to pull counter, Walk Ameev into punches will be critical to winning this fight. I think Ameev, uh, you know, can reach at times. He could try to explode from too far out. And if you start to time his entries, walk him into shots, you could stun him. And I think that Rocco will be able to put him on his back if he tries also. And I think he should try to do that at the end of rounds, test it out, see if he could do it. And Ameev looks strong off his back, so if he doesn't feel a big advantage there, he should just strike to be. Rocco does hold his hands low. He has to be wary of the explosive blitzes of Ameev. But I feel that he's going to be the better overall striker. He can make Ameev uncomfortable on the feet. And he has to control the center. He can't allow Ameev to head him off and uh, control him against a cage. And I think in that outrage, though, the low kicks, the straight punches, the head kick are all going to be dangerous. And I'm going to pick Rocco Martin to bounce back here in a big way. My pick's going to be uh, Tony Rocco Martin via third round TKO or submission. I think that he's either going to knock him out or he's going to hurt him and then submit him. And I think Ameev is very good, but I just think this is kind of a difficult matchup. I think it's a better matchup for uh, Rabazad than it is for or for Tony Martin than it is for Rabazad. And I think that Rocco has seen the better higher level competition and he's showed the ability to you know, win against higher level competition, defeat different styles. And I think Rabazad, you know, this is the first time he's facing a guy this well-rounded in a long time. So I'm going with Rocco Martin to get the victory here. And I'm next year we actually have an interesting fight. I was kind of surprised by the line as well with Shamil Gamzadov taking on Clitson Abreu. And um, Shamil, he's making his UFC debut in his home country. And he hasn't fought in over a year, but he is undefeated. He's 13-0. and I would say he hasn't really fought that high level of competition. He has fought some names, but they are not at the best part of their career. And he's someone who's been training in combat sports since he was a kid. He is well-rounded. He did win the amateur MMA championships and um, grappling kickboxing championships as well. He's another Dagestan guy. He trains at AKA, he trains at Eagles MMA with Khabib. And on the feet, you know, he's a mover, more of a volume fighter. He is athletic. He's light on his feet. He faints well. And the bulk of his offense come from his, comes from his lead hand and leg kicks. He'll use the jab, left hook to control distance, nice inside-outside low kicks. Good frame for the division. He fights long, nice round kicks, front kicks to the body, to the head. And when fighters can force him to strike in the pocket, though, he is uncomfortable. He'll use wide, looping shots to try to back opponents off. And he isn't the most technical fighter in the pocket. He's hittable there. He doesn't control the center the best, and I just don't think he's the most dangerous guy. Fighters can walk him down, land big shots inside, and he doesn't really have great, uh, or he does have really good footwork. So, I mean, that's how he's able to control distance with his lead hand. But when he's cut off and um, fighters could push him to the feds, he kind of looks a little bit um, susceptible to be knocked out. But um, he is the most dangerous when he can back fighters to the feds himself. He'll feign his way in well, throw more in combination, body head there, nice front kicks, dangerous flying knees. 
But overall, you know, he has more of a point fighting style, less, you know, risk averse a little bit. His grappling is a little bit questionable. You know, his offensive wrestling isn't bad. He'll shoot in on nice singles, good doubles. And when he gets on top, he doesn't really do much, though. He's a wet blanket. Um, I've seen him sweat before. He doesn't really have the best top control. And in a fight with Rodney Wallace, which I thought Wallace won clearly, he was taken down very easily. He was walked down. And Wallace was able to land some big singles, doubles. He caught his kicks, took him down. Gamzadov was throwing a lot of naked kicks. And when Wallace got top position, Gamzadov, you know, wasn't able to get up off his back. He did control posture and didn't take much damage, but he was controlled on the ground for large periods of the fight. Eddie Gordon was also able to get a big double leg slam in round two of their fight. And um, he's going to be facing a pretty good fighter in Klitsin Abreu, the Russian terror. He's going to be looking to take out another Russian in Russia. You know, Abreu's 3-1 and one versus Russians. He's also a southpaw, and he's a pretty good athlete. He closes the distance well. And fighters definitely have to respect his power on the feet. And at range, he kind of throws the left kicks, left hooks, straight left hands. And he likes to back opponents up with forward pressure. Really nice left high kick. He'll flurry in close with big punches. We saw him rock Sam Alvey multiple times. But he can kind of uh, duck his head a little bit and uh, kind of be a little bit obvious with his level changes as well. And Ankalaev was able to counter with uppercuts, which really hurt Abreu pretty bad. But um, Abreu is pretty fast. He's explosive. And he's going to be moving 185 pounds here. So I think he's going to be in good shape. He's going to be faster probably. And um, he does hold his lead hands low. And when he exits, he does tend to pull his chin in the air at times. He has been TKO'd twice before. But... Um, you know, he does have four knockouts. He hits hard. He has to be careful in the pocket with the pool counters of Gamzadov. But I think that he definitely is the harder hitter and the more likely guy to get a finish. But Abreu's grappling is definitely the most dangerous part of his game. He has 10 submissions and 15 wins. And, um, you know, he has good double legs. He's good at catching kicks, getting takedowns that way. And um, when he uses combinations to get opponents towards the cage, he'll gum up into, double, into body lock, circle to the back. Um, look to get the rear naked choke from standing position. And he also, you know, look to lock up front chokes from uh, um, from inside the clinch. He has good a uh, good job of snapping down opponents, circling to the back. And uh, he does have five rear naked chokes. He'll also work from the mount, also good balance. He'll look for arm bars, triangle arm bars. Opponents have had success taking him down, but he's active off his back with submissions, leg locks. Very comfortable there. He used Omoplatus to sweep. Go-Go's. And this is a good fight. But I'm going to go with Klitsch and Abreu to pull the upset, actually. I think that Shamil is a guy who likes to stick and move. He isn't really extremely dangerous. And unless he touches Klitsch right on the button, I think Klitsch going to have success with forward pressure combos inside. Shamil has his chin high in the air in fights. He's hittable. And he has questionable takedown defense. He could stick and move his way to a victory. But I think that Klitsch should be in the best shape of his life at... 185 and um you know i think that you know he's experienced in the ufc he's experienced beating russians in russia and i'm gonna say shamil starts well touching and moving but in round one or two he gets dropped or taken down and submitted so i'm going to clitz and abreu to uh pull the upset here and get a finish over shamil gonzada so i'm going to clitz and abreu to get it done here <laughs> man i mean <laughs> this could be a fun fight i guess but it's kind of a weird one right here with kadis ibrahimov taking on ed herman and um kadis dropped the fucking ball man in his ufc debut i mean he was well on his way to victory against dong jung but he was fighting like an idiot totally inefficient with his cardio throwing wild combinations full power no regard for gassing out and he was made to pay for it in the third round you know he got knocked out or he got submitted and he's coming out coming in here on short notice He's taking on an OG in Ed Herman. And um, it's going to be interesting. You know, his striking is just so wild. You throw one twos, looping right hooks, uppercuts. But he just weighing forward with these hooks in combination. Just boom, boom. And I mean, he's playing in big shots, but they're all arm punches. It's huge action. So he's wasting a lot of energy. And in his last fight, man, he didn't even go for takedowns. He's a really nice single leg. He'll use the single to transition a different takedown circle to the back. Good throws. Um, you'll look for bulldog chokes, rear naked chokes. He's good in the crucifix position. But, um, man, I mean, he didn't look for any of that in his fight um, with uh, in his debut with Dong Jung. But, I mean, we're going to see. I mean, if Ed Herbert can continue to his run or send Ibra Game off packing, you know, I think the loser of this fight's going to get cut. But, um, 
You know, Ibrahimov, like I said, I mean, he has no real technique. He'll overextend very badly. He ducks his head. And he's going to be way faster than Herman. And he hits hard. He has a long reach. And there's a chance he could overwhelm Herman early. But if he doesn't, he needs to pace himself better. And, uh, you know, I think if he gets top position, he could probably dominate on top. But, you know, like I said, in his fight with Jung, he barely went for any takedowns. And Ger Herman here, he's going to have to weather a storm, be composed, take over late. I think he's going to be looking for that knee because Ibrahimov ducks his head. He's going to be looking to counter with the tighter hooks, the straight punches. I feel Ed Herman's jab is going to be an issue for Ibrahimov. And Ed Herman is a black belt. You know, his takedown defense really isn't good, though. And that's what makes it a, makes it a winnable fight for Ma Magomed. But if he fights smart, um, you know, it could be winnable. But I, it's just hard to trust, though, man. I think Herman has a chance at a sub along with landing a knee or weathering the storm and taking over late. I mean... Take the big shots on the gloves, the arms. Let Ibrahimov tire himself out with the crazy shots. And um, I'm actually going to pick Ed Herman via knockout here. I'm going to say that he weathers the storm and eventually lands a knockout with a knee that puts uh, that puts uh, Caddis out, Caddis Ibrahimov out. So I'm going with um, Ed Herman via third round KO. <laughs> I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this fight at all. Man, fuck. Danny Roberts, real, like, I usually don't get that that about five performances. Like, I won't even, like, even, I mean, yeah, I will, but I won't, like, harp on it or shit. But, man, I mean, Danny, what were you doing in that fight with Bishop Ray? He just got spooked, man. He saw all the movement, the fucking flips, the weird ass shit he was doing. And he just started looking at him on the outside. And, you know, he turned a fight that he could e easily won. I mean, we just saw that Connolly guy take him down, control him on the mat use that, you know, movement early and was smart and uh you know, Danny just got overwhelmed in there and we've seen Danny knocked out multiple times. That was a terrible knockout that Pereira got on him. And um Zaleem, he's a guy that, you know, is very wild as well. He throws a lot of spins, but he's so dangerous, man, and he almost knocked out Mac Max Griffin multiple times. And like I said, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. I really Really no interest in this fight, but I'm going to Zaleem via knockout. I'm going to say he knocks out Danny Roberts. I just don't have any faith in picking Danny Roberts. So, I'm going to go with Zaleem um, Imadioff via second round knockout here. And up next year, we have an interesting fight, right? The co-main event, Alexander Volkov, Greg Hardy. This kind of got put together on short notice with... Uh, I th Who was it that pulled? I can't remember who pulled out of this fight, but um, it might have been... No, Walt Harris pulled out of the Overeem fight. You know, hopefully Walt Harris, I, you know, I feel terrible about his daughter, man, but he wasn't the one that pulled out. But hopefully they could find her. Everything ha happens good with that. But I can't remember who pulled out of this fight, but Greg Hardy stepped in here. And, uh, you know, Volkov, he's going to be fighting for the first time this year. He's, he had to pull out of a fight with uh, Overeem because of an injury, and he hasn't fought since that match with Derek Lewis. But, um... You know, he's a big imposing guy, six foot seven. He's a solid striker. He's pretty athletic for someone his size. And he does like to walk opponents down, keep them at the end of his strikes. Great jab, and it's stiff and powerful. I mean, he really busts opponents up with the jab. Really closes the distance with a nice one, too. Good hooks, uppercuts. And his defense, though, is not great. I mean, he's there to be hit when he closes the distance. And sometimes fighters can come up short because of of his length, but I think that Hardy having an 80 and a half inch reach could potentially cause him trouble, uh, Volkov trouble, and the best part of Volkov's striking game is probably the jab and his kicks, you know, really nice front kicks, really nice leg kicks, you will throw the front kick to the body with both legs, and he's almost like stabbing you with the jab, stabbing you with the front kick, like he has a shield, like when you try to get inside, boom, he's touching you, he's touching you, and he frustrates you, and eventually he'll start hurting you to the body, he'll start hurting you with the jab, and uh, really nice step in knees. And, uh, you know, he has been hurt, though, with overhands before against Timothy Johnson. Waited stupidly. Got knocked out by Derek Lewis. And uh, he has been KOT KO twice in his career. And uh, that last KO was very bad. He does have power. He has quite a few knockouts himself. But, uh, you know, Volkov, to me, is not the greatest grappler. Uh, you know, he was able to deny the majority of Fabrizio Beardoom's takedown attempts. But he was taken out pretty easily with the single legs. And when opponents can push him to the cage, he can be controlled there. He can be taken out against the cage with body locks. He can be taken out of cage with double legs. And also with Tybee double legs as well. 
And uh, he is decent off his back, though. His guard is hard to pass. Even Fabricio Verdun was able, unable to pass his guard. He doesn't really have any submissions off his back or get-ups, though. So he kind of just loses the round off his back. But stay safe there. And on top, though, he does have some nice ground and pound. He'll look for submissions himself. But I don't think he's going to be able to take down Greg Hardy here. And Greg Hardy's striking, you know, looked much improved his last fight. Whatever you want to say about the guy with the inhaler, with all that bullshit in his past. I mean, he's improving rapidly. And he was using much more ladder movement, good head movement. He was slipping just out of the way of punches. Very fast hand speed. Really nice jab, left hook, blazing one-two. He would throw some brutal low kicks, nasty uppercuts. And his straight right hand versus Soli was a piston, man. I mean, that was landing clean. Uh, really nice round kicks to the body. He'll mix in high kicks, Superman punches. And he's a very dangerous striker, man. He has one punch power, extremely explosive, very fast. But he still does lead back with his chin high at times. I do feel the jab of Volkov could give could give Hardy issues. And uh, Hardy takes punches very well, though, man. He barely will even move back. So Sassoli had some bombs on him that didn't even phase him. And I think Sassoli hits hard. And Hardy showed the ability to move for three rounds. He didn't slow down. I mean, he did have that, you know, fiasco with the inhaler. But I don't know, man. I don't think he was really that tired. It's kind of hard to say. I mean, I guess we'll be able to tell moving on in the future. But... You know, he largely dominated that fight with Sassoli. He does have five knockout wins. And, uh, you know, he isn't looking to grapple here, but he has shown good submission defense. You know, he's good at sprawling. He has a nice whizzer. And he's been able to counter opponent's takedown defense and finish him with grounded pounds. Um, you know, I feel like in this fight, he's really not going to have to worry about the takedowns too much. And I think he's going to be able to see him coming if he does try to get him taken down because of the height of... Uh, Volkov, and I feel like in the clinch, Hardy's going to be significantly stronger. But I know a lot of you guys want Hardy to lose, but man, I'm going to go with Greg Hardy by knockout. I think he's going to be the much faster guy with his hand speed. His reach is going to give Volkov problems. And I think Hardy's going to be able to use his jabs, his movement early to get his timing. And then I think he's going to explode in when Volkov makes a mistake in the pocket and take him out. And I don't think Volkov hits that hard. I don't think he's going to take out Hardy unless he lands really clean or it's an accumulation thing. And I think that he has to fight smart, make no mistakes. He's been out over a year. Hardy's been very active. I think that's also a factor. So I'm going to say Greg Hardy via late first round knockout. In the, I think that he's going to make a lot of people unhappy, but he's going to go out there and uh, get the win. And I'm next sure we have the final fight of the night, the main event, which is only three rounds, which is a little unfortunate, but Zabit taking on Calvin Cater, and he's getting all the advantages of this fight, Zabit is, you know, not only did the fight get moved from Boston to Russia, it's a three-round main event, you know, Calvin Cater uh, stated he and his team won in five rounds, but Magomed Sharipov declined on the short notice, and Zabit's obviously going to goose here, man, I mean, he's 5-0 in the UFC, he's a big-time prospect, but... Cavalcator has to have a chip on his shoulder coming into this matchup. I mean, the UFC's made it clear who they're catering to. And uh, Calvin has to go in there and spoil the show. But he's looked like a beast himself. He's 4-1 in the UFC. He's undoubtedly fought the higher-level competition. I mean, he holds victories over Ricardo Lamas, Shea Burgos, Andre Feely. Other than uh, Jeremy Stevens, Zabit really hasn't beaten many names or fought many names. But this is a conscious of style on the feet. You know, Cater's going to want to crowd Zabit, back him up with the double jab, boxing combos. Make it an in-the-pocket fight. And Zabit's going to want to keep it at kick range. Use his diverse attack to pot shot and move. Maybe mix in some takedowns. And, uh, you know, you know, Cater comes out like a back truck early, though. In most fights, he starts extremely quickly. Big power in his hands. Really crisp boxing. Excellent jab to get inside. Nasty straight hook punches. I mean, his one, too, is disgusting. We saw his knockout power against Ricardo Lamas with that. And he needs to keep the pressure, attack the body, and walk the beat down. And when he can back him up, go for it. Try to knock him out. And he needs to be in and out, use footwork, not load, head him off, try to touch and pull the beat into his heavier shots. And he has to keep the pressure and the volume high. You know, just try to cook the beat, tire him out. We've seen the beat tired previous fights. I definitely think that it's, if this was five rounds, it favored Calvin. And I think Calvin is the tougher guy with better cardio. For Zabit, I see Zabit moving, using a lot of low kicks, trying to pull Cater into his, uh, you know, leg, body, and high kicks along with the left hand. He has a really nice left straight, left upper, and he's very good at fighting backwards, heavy calf kicks, more diversity, and I think that, you know, he's a little bit cleaner fighting moving backwards, 
and his crazy you know moves give the judges something to think about they can also freeze his opponents i think the left round kick to the body will land heavy and Zabit is an excellent grapp grappler and i expect him to use that here i think that cater pressures hard and i actually think when he gets inside Zabit's gonna look for look to clinch up go for takedowns and uh his link gives him an incredible advantage in the clinch against most guys. Amazing clinch takedowns and control once he gets a hold of you. He looks frail, man, but he's strong in grappling situations. Nice body locks, trip takedowns. Very good at jumping on the back, and he'll grab a leg immediately with the overhook after getting his hooks in. Very similar to Khabib, which completely neutralizes his opponent's posture. And when he gets a suplex from the back, he will hook his hook his opponent's legs. As soon as he gets gets it and move immediately into side control, he has tremendous guard passing, great fighting the legs, moving into full mount, really nasty crucifix. And his top game is just elite, man. Very technical. And uh, one of the only weaknesses we've seen from from Zabit is he get a little bit too complacent in opponent's guards. His two losses included his one amateur loss or via R bar, but he keeps fighting with Chris Fishgold. He was uh, taken down early with a double leg. And uh, Cater isn't a very active grappler. He doesn't really do much besides box, really. He will throw the front kick up the middle, body head. But um, he has a solid double leg as well. He'll use that to break the rhythm of opponents sometimes. But I don't think he's going to be trying to take down uh, Zabit at all. And I just think in this fight, Zabit's going to be able to pot shot and move. He doesn't have to be in the pocket. I think he's going to be blasting low kicks, left round kicks to the body. I think Cater's going to get more frustrated as the fight goes on, get more aggressive, which will lead him to get hit with left hand or a big kick, take it down. And I think if Zabit can get on top, he may have an advantage. He could pull off the sub, but I think Cater, you know, he has been submitted before. I just feel like Zabit has more weapons. He can win the fight through that. I will say he's a beat via decision, and I do think Cater, he hits hard. He has a chance to win the by knockout here, but um, I'm going with Zabit to get it done. And uh, for my most confident pick of the week, I'm going to go with Roosevelt Roberts. And for the parlay of the week, it's going to be Rustam Kabilov, and Roosevelt Roberts is the parlay of the week. And also, you know, for an underdog of the week, which I'm pretty confident in, and I've actually been hitting a lot of this dude's fights, man. I mean, I've been really good at predicting this guy's fights, Rocco Martin. Where I rode that whole train at welterweight, picked Damian Maya, bet Damian Maya, and uh, I bet Tony Martin here against um, in his fight here. So I just feel like he's gonna win this fight, man. I like Tony Martin as an underdog, so um, that's gonna be my underdog of the week as well. And um, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe. You know, tell me your opinion of 244. I might do a video talking about that a little bit. You know, breaking down the main event all of that and i think i'm going to start potentially doing some videos maybe like on a friday or sunday or I'm not sure i do kind of like a roundup of the week where i kind of just discuss the topics a little bit give more of an opinion where you know in this i'm doing more of like an analytical thing or i'm not really giving um opinion based things i'm not really you know showing super personality so maybe if i do a video like that maybe like a 20 minute thing roundup maybe you guys could you know, I don't know. I think that'll be interesting. You know, I could maybe look at, you know, websites, news of the week, some breaking fights, talk about that, my thoughts on that. But, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And, um, like I said, make sure to comment, like, subscribe. And, um, yeah, hopefully we could do well this week and um, win some money.